G'day, welcome back to this episode. So it's been a while again, but I've been hard at work doing something a little bit different uh, and got out of the shed. And this episode is really quite exciting for me personally because I've embarked on learning a new skill and that's uh, reverse engineering parts and 3D printing those parts for, uh, for the build. So in this episode, I'm gonna embark on completely scanning, reverse engineering and fabricating or 3D printing the gauge housings for the original HZ GTS dash gauges and then doing a variation for fitting retro modern gauges into the same housings. So a lot of work, I've done most of it already and, uh, and this is what happened. All right, so I'm not gonna to ramble too long, but a brief history on these gauges. These are the infamous uh, yellow needle uh, HZ GTS gauges, and they were made by a company called Flex Drive. In fact, Flex Drive, I always used to know as a kid because I lived around that area. It was actually in Gisborne. One of their factories was in Gisborne. And if only I'd known then, I would have gone down and, and got these dash gauges, HZ gauges, because now for a set of yellow needle in good condition, they're about three thousand, about two to three thousand dollars, depending on um, the quality that you get. So basically, the set of these gauges includes a four cluster gauge, and that is your fuel, temperature, battery, and oil. Then you've got a taco, so rev taco. Um, these are identical to the speed speedometer as well, except for the mechanics in the back. Uh, and so same, similar housings, and you've got your, your globes in there, plastic sleeve in here, and just a circular sort of molded imprint out of ABS. It's all ABS, I'd imagine. And then uh, this is the speedo. So you've got that mechanical drive here that goes to the gearbox, and then the yellow needle and the famous uh, speedo face there so they're quite a they look simple but they're quite a complicated um, thing to reproduce there's a lot of different angles coming on there's one there everything's sort of not flat that's got a slope on it that's got a little bit of a concave in it there's a angle here where that's recessed in you've got angles on the corners you've got rounded corners and in the back you've got a lot of different shapes going on it was quite a challenge to actually get this modeled. First of all, I'll go through the process on all of them, but first of all, let's tackle the four gauge cluster and see if we can reverse engineer the housing for that to fit the original backing plates. So here we go. These, uh, as described, these lenses come off. They're actually sitting in a little ridge So the ridge, you can see, is indented. It's raised, so you've got that circular indent, and then you've got a little raised two mil ridge line that houses those reflector, or those lenses, and then you've got these some indented screw positions there as well, and then you've got the raised embossed icons. On the back, you've got, yeah, just the, uh, the screw mounts there which are all different heights and then yeah, you've got those um, circular embossed um, areas there as well where the gauges go so you know a bit going on but uh, and you've also got a mount there that screws on and you can see that snap so the gauge themselves they're really quite intricate you've got this kind of All the wiring, you can see these tiny little wires rolled up inside. I mean, it wouldn't take much to break these at all. And you can understand why they're worth so much because not many people would, well, they're not reproduced anymore, but to reproduce them, it would be pretty hard. There's people that repair them though. All these gauges were actually loan on loan to me um, through someone that watches the channel reached out to me on instagram 
and uh, sent them down from Sydney. I've never met them before in my life. Um, and they were happy to send these gauges down so that I can look at them, measure them, reverse engineer them and do what I need to do. So I greatly appreciate um, that gesture and it's seriously helped uh, get to this point. So thanks again. All right, so now that I've got them apart, I'm gonna scan this individually because this is really the part that I'm after. And uh, for the original um, replic replication, at least anyway, and I'll also use this for the retro build as well, but it won't require any of the detailed sections as well. So let's get scanning. So the first one is done, the four gauge cluster, and I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out. It was a big challenge to get everything lined up to fit those original backing plates, but I've managed to do so. And also managed to fit the um, reproduction rare spares covers as well, the lenses. Um, everything is in there and it lines up in the actual dash, HZ dash as well. So I'm going to call that a success. It was a really good challenge to, um, to start things off. So now that that's done, I'm going to move on to these gauges here. So they're basically exactly the same um, in their shape. They're just a flipped version. They've actually got a, quite a, a little angle on each one of them, depending on which side. So there's a left and a right, and it's determined by the angle on this little um, mounting point here. So I'm... Um, Basically going to just start off with uh, getting this main design done on one side and I'm going to kick start instead of reproducing these because that took such a long time I'm going to get stuck into the retro gauges which um, I've bought a set from eBay and They're just from China. They're nothing special. They're not automator or anything like that But uh, they've got an old-school mounting bracket at the back Which is going to work to my advantage because I don't want to have to cut that um, cast aluminium backing strut that's in there. So the more advanced and more expensive gauges have a screw base at the, uh, at the rear, which sort of clamps into the mounting platform wherever they are, and that extends too far. So in order to get them in, you have to cut that bracket. But with the cheaper Chinese ones that I've got, uh, there's an old school kind of metal bracket that comes in the back, and actually the distance is less and allows you to get it in without actually cutting it. So you'll see um, in a while when I actually start getting into it. But so I'm going to start the process again by scanning this, getting into the computer, reverse engineering it, get the new measurements going and, and start printing. So let's go.
All right, job done. The gauges are all done, they all fit, and I'm really, really happy with the, the whole entire job. Um, I'm not the first to do these gauges, and I probably won't be the last. Reality is I couldn't find or get in contact with anyone that was actually making these. So I decided to make them myself, and I'm really glad I went down that path. It's taught me a lot of new skills. I've been wanting to do 3D printing for quite a few years and finally got the printer and I'm absolutely ecstatic with that printer. It's an absolute gun printer. It's done the job beautifully. Certainly not a beginner's job. I've, I've been doing 3D modeling for about 10 years and that's part of my job. So I've harnessed those skills and put them to, to use with, with this part of the fabrication and, and yeah, really, really happy with the result. The fit and finish in these larger gauges is slightly smaller the, the 92 mil gauge and the actual holes are in about 100 mil the holes are for these gauges are about 40 mil in the fascia and the gauges are 52 mil so getting that alignment was quite a challenge and the gauges come with a little bit of a, a slot on each of the hinges so each of the um, mounting points just so you can get the adjustment slide to side and up and down clock actually you can see i made a little bracket for that that goes directly screws directly onto the fascia and the actual, and replaces the, the old cumbersome um, HZ clock. That uh, is quite a big gauge actually, and that usually does the same thing, screws directly the fascia. So the whole set's there. I just don't have an updated um, gauge for that yet. And I'm gonna grab one, but it's exactly the same as size as those 52 mils. I've also been doing some other printing. I've managed to print the Kingswood badge some of you who follow me on Instagram would have seen some updates on that. I was really happy with the way that turned out and um, been playing around with certain plastics and things like that. But uh, it's just not quite there for the, the polish that you need for that. So I'm looking into other, other avenues for that just for just because I'm, in, I'm really enjoying the process of fabricating these parts. And so I'm looking into a different kind of uh, pro procedure for that one. Um, so stay tuned for that, which could be a little bit of fun. I've also got a lot of people asking me to do other parts uh, that are quite rare. So the list is growing and I've managed to, um, I'm going to manage to try and get to all of them because, um, well, I really enjoy it. It's a great process and rewarding seeing something you usually never see come out of the computer, come out in this box. And um, for me, being a 3D modeler for years, generally always see it inside the computer. And now it's like a magic button, you push it and it pops out in a box. So. Uh, it's a pretty exciting time. I think 3D printing is definitely the way of the future with, with a lot of manufacturing. Yeah, so if, you've, if you're thinking about doing the same thing and uh, you're keen to get a set of these gauges, I'll put a link down in the description. Haven't got it sorted yet. In the next few days, I will have some information on how you can get a set. And if you want to use the same uh, gauges that I got through eBay, I can also um, sort that out as well. So yeah, I think the benefits of them over the autometer was a price and second you don't have to cut the back support like you do with the larger gauges um, which have their screw caps so these ones allow you to actually use the completely original uh, fascia but also completely original um, bracing and support behind it without cutting anything I and mean, for me that was that was a win so that's it, I'm gonna wrap it up. Thanks again for uh, subscribing if you haven't and uh, following the journey through. Check out Instagram, I'm always on there during episodes. So if you wanna have some uh, look at some content between that, Barnsies underscore builds. Check out the merch store, it helps out, buy a hat, t-shirt or hoodie. And um, yeah, that also helps out the channel. So until next time, I'm gonna get this thing into the ute and uh, get busy with the next project. See ya.